All right, this is a version of a pretty classic physics work and energy problem. Um, usually it's some variation of a block or a mass on an inclined plane um, at some height, and we're going to release it from rest and allow it to slide down the plane, and then it will strike a spring, and we're going to be asked how far does the spring compress before the object comes to rest. And then here, like sometimes, we'll be asked how far back up the ramp does the spring launch it. Um, this one that we have in front of us is pretty complicated simply because we have friction the whole way down. Some uh, variations will put friction only on the first part before we hit the spring. Some, some don't have friction at all. This one has friction the whole way down, so we're going to have to be able to account for the energy losses due to friction. So let's just see what we have. We're given uh, that it's at a height h, which is measured above the equilibrium point of the spring, which is an interesting place to put it. So the idea, here's the unstretched length of the spring. Um, this line over here shows you where we're measuring h. So h is from here to the top of the ramp. The ramp is at some uh, angle theta. The spring has some constant k, and there is a coefficient of kinetic friction mu k between the block and the ramp. So, because of how h is defined here, it's going to make our choice of zero, our zero point for gravitational potential energy interesting. Um, now, think about what happens physically as this block slides down the ramp, it compresses the spring, so the block will continue to move down the ramp after it strikes the spring, because the spring has to compress. So, notice the gra if the, the gravitational, or the position of the block, will end up below this position here. So if we're going to set our gravitational potential energy zero point here, as the block moves into the spring, it's going to actually develop negative gravitational potential energy. Our other choice is to set the zero point uh, at, the com at the compressed length of the spring. I'm actually going to set it uh, here at h. You can do it either way. It will get, you'll get the same answer. Uh, so it's kind of an arbitrary choice. I'm just going to choose to set it here, which means as the spring compresses, the block will move below that position and the gravitational potential energy will be zero. Okay, so I've written down a couple things we know here. I've got the po initial potential energy is just mgh. Um, it's going to slide down a distance d, which I'm going to need to know because I have friction involved. So I've calculated d using some trig as h over sine theta because h is what I'm given. Um, the force of friction is going to be mu k times the normal force. On an inclined plane, the normal force is going to be mg cosine theta. And the friction force is going to be negative because friction represents a loss, right? Well, the force is, force is negative because it's pointed up the ramp. Uh, the velocity is down the ramp, so if we're calling that positive, the force up the ramp has to be negative, and that's going to represent an energy loss. So the negative sign will carry over to my energy consideration. And I've just set here where I'm setting my zero point, where the block contacts the spring. So my strategy, for at least for the first part, is to solve it in two steps. To solve for the energy at point one, which is where the block contacts the spring. And then point two, which is where the spring is fully compressed and the block has stopped moving. So I want to know how much energy the block has uh, when it... Uh, hits the spring, so that I'm going to stop with that now in step one. Uh, I've just written up my energy equation here. I've got the initial potential energy, the initial kinetic energy, uh, the work due to dissipative forces, right? This is uh, in, any non-conservative force. Uh, I said dissipative forces. In this case, it's dissipative, but any non-conservative force that does work, in other words, that puts energy into the system or takes it out of the system, it's going to be accounted for here. So this is all the energy uh, that I have, uh, at the initial energy plus whatever work is done on the system, that's got to be equal to the final energy content, which I've written here is potential energy plus kinetic energy. All right, so just unpacking these terms, initial potential energy is mgh. There is no initial kinetic energy because I'm not moving. The work done, in this case by friction, is going to be the frictional force mu k mg cosine theta negative mu k mg cosine theta times the distance this thing is going to slide d which i've notated here i'm going to substitute in the next step as h over sine theta 
And that's got to be equal to the final potential energy. Well, at this point, 1, that's where I've set my 0 point, so there's no potential energy there. And then the final kinetic energy, which is just going to be 1 half m v final squared. So either one of these sides of this equation, which I've rewritten down here, E total is equal to MGH bracket 1 minus mu k cotangent theta. Right. Where that comes from is substituting in d h over sine theta. So I've got a cosine theta over sine theta, which gets me the cotangent theta. Then I just factored out mgh from both of these. We've got an mgh here and mgh here. I factor that out, and I'm left with this 1 minus mu k cotangent theta. That's the total energy of the system expressed in terms of the original gravitational potential energy and the work done by friction. I can also express it in terms of the final velocity, 1 half mv1 squared. So I've changed the subscript because it's my final in part 1, but this is the kinetic energy developed in part 1. So whichever one of those expressions I use is going to depend on what I'm looking for. If I was asked what is the velocity of the block as it goes into the spring, well, I can unpack it from here. I can solve for this velocity in terms of all the stuff that I know. Uh, if I just care about the total energy, um, I'm going to use whichever one is, is uh, it has information that I know. As it turns out, it's going to be the left-hand side because I don't know what this velocity is. But that's the energy the block has as it impacts the spring. It's the total gravitational potential energy minus, or original gravitational potential minus the work done by friction. All right, now for part two. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. I've drawn a, 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 a different triangle here. So the idea, this hatch, hatch mark here should represent where the block hits the spring initially. It compresses and comes to a rest here after traveling this distance delta x. Delta x is going to be the compression distance. It's what I'm looking for. So what's happened here is friction continues to take energy out of the system as it moves down. I'm also storing energy in the spring, right? So I'm going to have to account for both of those. Uh, so I've just written out what I know here. My initial gravitational potential energy is zero because I set my zero point here. My initial spring potential energy is zero because I haven't compressed it any at this point. My kinetic energy is equal to the kinetic energy at point one here, but I'm going to use this side because this involves things that I know, right? I don't know what the velocity is, but I know all this stuff. But all this stuff is equal to the kinetic energy, which is why I'm going to use this expression for the kinetic energy here. All right, so writing down my equation, I've got potential gravitational energy, potential spring energy initial, kinetic energy initial. This, again, is going to be the work done by the friction as the block moves down that final little leg. This has got to be equal to the final gravitational potential, the final spring potential, the final kinetic. Notice my final kinetic is going to be zero. The block has stopped. That's what I'm looking for. Um, initial gravitational is, is zero. Initial spring is zero. So if I unpack all these terms for the kinetic energy, I've got mgh bracket 1 minus mu k cotangent theta. That's the initial kinetic energy. Then the work done by friction is again going to be minus mu k mg cosine theta. That's the friction force. And this time my displacement is this delta x. That's going to be equal to final gravitational potential. Now remember this thing moves down below the zero point, so this is going to be negative. I get negative mg uh, delta x sine theta. That's just how far it's down. Delta x sine theta is the vertical distance it's moved down. And mg is the, gravity, uh, the gravitational force. And then the kinetic energy, 1 half k uh, delta x, I'm sorry, not, not kinetic energy, the spring potential energy is 1 half k delta x squared. Again, delta x is what I'm looking for. My kinetic energy is zero. So that, that equation got a little crowded there. I rewrote it over here. Let's go through that quickly again. MGH times bracket 1 minus mu k cotangent theta. This is the uh, initial kinetic energy minus mu k mg cosine theta delta x. That's the frictional loss as it travels this last little distance. Is equal to minus mg delta x sine theta. That's the gravitational potential energy, which is negative because I'm below the zero point. And 1 half k delta x squared is the final spring uh, potential energy, which is, the, which is the energy that I put into the spring uh, 
due to all of this stuff. So just do a little algebra if I rearrange and collect like terms. This is what I get. I get 1 half k delta x squared minus mg delta x sine theta uh, plus mu k mg cosine theta delta x minus mgh bracket 1 minus mu k cotangent theta is equal to 0. I'm setting this whole thing equal to 0. In other words, I've moved all this stuff over uh, to one side of the equation. I'm setting it equal to 0 because I'm going to have to solve this with the quadratic formula. Uh, so I'm going to divide through by mg just to make it a little cleaner. Notice I've got an mg here, here, and here. So I'm going to divide through by mg. I'm going to factor out, uh, I've got delta x in both of these terms. So I'm going to factor all that out. And when I do, this is what I come up with. k over 2mg delta x squared plus this bracketed term delta x minus h times this bracketed term is equal to zero and I've got it in the form that I can solve quadratically. So I'm going to do that with, for, with some numbers in another video uh, but for the rest of, uh, well, I'm going to shut this, I'm going to stop this video now and we'll solve the second part in the next video and then in the third one we'll actually put some numbers to it and see how that works out.